need in your package, your lovely uh, Wildfire wallet, you'll notice that when you open it up, uh, it looks just like your normal everyday wallet. Horizontal credit card slots there that you can get uh, one, two, three, three credit cards in one more. I was going to say, you can double up six. Yeah, yeah, so you yeah. get loads of credit cards in there. You've got your normal uh, double bill fold um, compartments there, so you can get loads of stuff in there. You'll notice the wallet really well made, really durable. You've also got underneath the credit card slot there, uh, you've got your uh, slot where you can put extra credit cards or playing cards. Playing cards. Um, I keep... Um, well, I think five. everyone knows what men keep in those pockets. Uh, yeah, everyone knows well, I keep men. five playing cards in my wallet. One there, one there. Says a lot. Says a lot about you. That does. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm married. I've got two kids. <laughs> and uh, here, I just said that the ID compartment for your yeah, the ID uh, compartment, magic circle card, or the photo of your loved Driving ones, or yeah. whatever goes in there. So it's a really practical, everyday type wallet. Um, or even if you don't use it as your everyday wallet, just to get yeah, when well, you bring it out, it well, we like say it. it is a practical wallet. It is classed as an incendiary device. Mm -hmm. So if you did go through airport security with it, it wouldn't go well. So just keep that in mind. Just use some common <coughs> sense. Um, it is. It has got metal parts in it as well, which you yeah. notice when you open it up the inside. You'll see it's got metal parts. So it will set off metal um, tags. They, they are thin. The metal trays are such that are here. So to be honest. We wouldn't really recommend using this as your everyday wallet, but when you're going out doing magical performances, set it up as if it is. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. It looks, it looks, it looks and feels like one. To all extents mm -hmm. and services, it is one. My wallet that I, my everyday wallet, I sit on, I lean on, I leave it in places. I wouldn't recommend doing that with this, but yeah, it's better than, oh, here, look at my wallet, and they pull out a massive wallet like that, which mm -hmm. no man's ever seen before. Yeah. This um, is a, a legit copy. Because if you sit heavily on these, you may bend the trays. Yeah. Um, but if you're the sort of person that doesn't have it in the back pocket where you sit on and you keep it somewhere else, they're going to be absolutely fine. Yeah. Uh, if you're standing up walking around performing there's no reason why it can't be in your back pocket because you're, right. not, you're not going to sit down on it, so it'll be absolutely fine. And then from now on, every time you get a new credit card, just keep your old one. Yeah. My wallet's full of that, my working wallet's yeah, full, got of, full of that weighted. All of our old cards. Outdated equity cards, outdated credit cards, mm -hmm. straight in there, yeah. And you're away. So, that's a quick overview of your wallet. You'll see it's really well made. Please don't worry if it feels stiff when you get it. It is leather, we'll need working in. And we'll work in, and uh, if it starts off really flimsy, then, then it's, it, it's going to get worse. Yeah. Uh, whereas at least if it's a bit tough, it'll soon wear in. Um, right, do you want to get the boring bit out of the way? Yeah. There's health and safety. Uh, health and safety, yes. You can do that, you're the serious <laughs> one. Okay, unfortunately Saturn Magic cannot expect any responsibility <laughs> for any harm, injury, cause or damage caused while using this product. Uh, it is dangerous, it uses lighter fluid, the thing's going to burst into flames, you can burn your hands, singe your arms, burn your clothing. <laughs> yeah, you can singe your arms, yes. can you? You can set the place on fire if you, you happen to drop it while it's alight. You can set, that's the other thing as well, yeah, please don't drop it. You can set fire to spectators, you can set fire to money in your wallet, we've all seen it happen. Mm. The new plastic notes do not go well near flames, mm -hmm. so please just use some common sense yeah thankfully the the slots on these the well, um, the things yeah. are, are well deep so um, there isn't yeah, going to be paper sticking up above no. so make sure you haven't got things sticking up above the um, the edge yeah. of the wallet there we all know somebody that's that's done it mm -hmm. um so that's the boring health and safety bit yeah, if you're please. under 18 you shouldn't be using this unless your parents are um, agreeable yeah 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 that's and, the word. Uh, and actually, you shouldn't. You wouldn't, in theory, be able to buy lighter fluid anyway if you're under the age of 18. Not in the UK anyway. No, probably not. Um, so um, we're not saying children can't use this because up and coming magicians do have to, you know, do things. Yeah. Uh, but really, it's an over 18 product uh, unless under parental supervision. Parental supervision. Does that so cover us enough? I think. I think <laughs> we're done. I think we're done. Just please use your common sense and don't hurt yourself or yeah. anybody else. And if you do, don't phone us. No. Right, so into the meat and potatoes, as they say. There's the. Um, they don't say that. They do in America. They don't say that. I've watched loads that of. That means something else, Mark. No, I've watched enough magic tutorials in my life to know that a lot of people say that. That's meat and two veg. Um, oh. Anyway, so when you open it up, here's your two trays hinged in the middle, and you've got a wheel uh, here, which is your striker wheel. Now, if you just have a quick go with that before you put any lighter fluid on it, assuming you haven't done that yet and jumped ahead of where we're going. Uh, this has got some a little bit of residue on there maybe so hopefully it won't light but if you flick that uh, wheel you'll see a little spark comes off 
the, the wheel on our one uh, is mounted to a lot of firewall. It's the, um, the wheel is actually up in the top corner there, which means that the spark is sort of in this sort of area only, whereas this one is positioned in the middle, so you've got more of a... Uh, more success in yeah. the uh, more, more natural. We'll get to that. We'll get to that uh, in the ignition rate um, of the thing. And you see, it's a nice heavy wheel, and it's easy to operate, and gives you a good spark. So the science of that is the wheel spins round and hits the flint, which creates yeah. a spark. There's a, there's a flint in here. We'll cover it in a little while with a close-up camera shot. But you'll notice on here. There's a little uh, screw that you can undo with one of these uh, like watchmakers type screwdrivers. Yeah. Uh, there isn't or, that, uh, the, the screwdrivers that you get in Christmas crackers and think when am I ever going to need one of yeah. these? It's got to be a very very small one. Keep one of those in your yeah, magic box. I've got the wrong one there, a little flat one. Uh, there isn't actually a little groove in the bottom of there but if you just push that it's not held in like mega tight so if you just like push it in and twist it there's enough, there's enough friction grip yeah. there to undo it. It will, um, it will undo the screw. We'll get a nice close-up on this in a minute uh, but there's a nice um, so you can unscrew that screw it will fall out take that out put it safe to one side and then there's a spring inside there and then on top of the spring there is a flint and basically the spring uh, this is, you can screw that in to different amounts and that will put a different amount of pressure on the flint which will determine how hard the striker wheel is to uh, strike basically yeah. to produce your spark. Produce spark so it's a very simple mechanism but we'll get a nice close-up shot and show you how to change the uh, flint thing in a little while but like we said if you can look after a zipper lighter this mm -hmm. is exactly the yep. same uh, so basically what you need to do to start with is uh, load the uh, pads up with uh, lighter fluid. But Mark, we've got two different sorts of lighter fluid here. Yeah, people are thinking, is there a, is there a difference? Okay, so we've got Zippo and we've, we've got... We've got generic brand. This is a ball brand, but this is this is basically equivalent to anything that you get from a pound shop or a news agent. Yeah, it? in the UK the pound shops sell um, this particular one, costs a pound. Yeah, <laughs> Swan do one as well. Yeah. And, uh, so any old lighter fluid, basically, yeah. that you want uh, will do. Uh, the Zippo brand... Um, it's got more of a, when you smell it, it's got more of an oily kind of... It's uh, less pungent, yeah. there's a word for you. Mm -hmm. um, I think, from experience and from trying them out on my zipper, I think the flame is brighter with this stuff, and I think it lasts a little bit longer as well. Yeah, um, I, but, th I think that evaporates a bit quicker. Yeah, but too, saying yeah. that, I use this as well. We, we said, mm -hmm. didn't we, if it's nice to see this on the shelf, but if you've mm -hmm. got a busy weekend and you're off to mm -hmm. the, the corner shop, yeah. just grab that. Uh, that may not last you just a little bit longer yeah. than the thinner one, which will tend to have a bit quicker. So you may want to uh, experiment with different brands. But this is it. If it comes in a tin like this, it's the one you need. It's not mm -hmm. the aerosol one. No, no. Uh, it's this stuff. Yeah. So for what it costs, really, and how long it'll last you, try and get the Zippo one yeah. if you can. And that's you owe it to your audience. One to be, uh, you need to wet these pads, uh, but you wet them to, to such an extent that, uh, in fact, because there's a tray there, if we just... Uh, do this on that first pad and just go over it nice and evenly. You'll soon see if there's too much because you'll see a little bit um, accumulating against the side of the tray there, which there isn't. If you over soak it to start with, as soon as you tip it like that, you'll end up with lighter fluid. In fact, we've got a little bit there now overlapping the edges there, so we know that that's. It's nice and easy full. to get rid of, isn't it? So um, it is easy to get rid of it because we're going to do some test firings in a minute, yeah. which you have to be very careful of when you first do the test firings because the the trays are not uh, sealed. Some lighter fluid will seep out onto the edges. And what happens then, Mark? It goes up. Do you lose any? Uh, yeah, a few hairs. Any hairs? <laughs> but this, that's why you need to be extremely careful. I might have caught that on video. With might be an outtake to this. Yeah. So we've got one loaded, and then we'll quickly. So this is exactly like filling up a zipper lighter and in the same way do that. when you've filled up a zipper lighter and it's fresh you always light it a few times just to burn off any excess. Yeah. Now I'm loading this up properly as if it's going to be used in, in, a, in, a, in a real gear performance situation. As you can see I've gone over it twice now and that's still not leaking. So, yeah, little, now I use a lot of lighter fluid and I use fire a lot and even I'm thinking man that's quite a bit. Yeah. So, so I can see that that's um, <coughs> quite runny in there now as such. Now there is a little bit of residue that's gone over onto the fire wallet. Uh, never just put this in your in your pocket now and start performing with it. No. Even if you're at a gig and you forgot to fill it up, 
um, and you've just done that at the gig you need to be somewhere safe at the gig to do a couple of test firings to make sure any access excess that's run yeah. uh, is going to burn itself off so the idea of test firing is to just get it to work all complete so this will get rid of the vapor and any of the liquid yep so let's do it now there we go let's just do it again actually we're okay there you didn't you I could see that there was nothing burning at the bottom or sides uh, or anywhere that it shouldn't be. Uh, if the liquid had run out too much, then that would have been on fire as well. Now, the more you keep it open, the more dry it gets. That's right. fine. That's what you want, isn't it? Now, the way that um, you operate this is just as you saw me do. So you open up your wire. Uh, most people open this the second way. Uh, it depends on the routine that you want to do, but you could take something out of your wallet, give it to somebody, close it up, and then when you pick the wallet back up again you could uh, decide to do that or most people normally approach the people uh, go to get something out of their wallet and then do it and close it now that is the speed yes um, the amount of time that you want you, you don't want to stand there with it uh, let me turn this way that is way too long yeah now the reason why it's too long is the flames start to get higher and higher it will um, use more fuel uh, so therefore it won't last as long because you've had it open uh, for ages and also the flames now you may not have noticed but I was holding the wallet at a bit of an angle there you always do that because flames will naturally go upwards if you held the wallet like this and ignited the flames the flames will still go up but what will happen they will naturally uh, flap and hit the top of the wallet which will cause your wallet to burn stroke melt um, and it will burn front. stroke melt anything that's in there so. yeah yeah so remember always operate it I'm trying to think of the angle there but so uh, if I come sideways so you don't do it like this <laughs> it wants to be I won't light it don't worry so it wants to be at that kind of angle and actually if we move a little bit closer to the camera and light it now you want to you don't want to strike this will probably light yeah when I yeah, do that perfect. Um, because it's been freshly loaded when you open it normally you want to open it just a little bit and then strike it yeah and close it the bit that people I see people forgetting with a fire wallet is it's supposed to be magic if you open it you need to ignite it as it opens don't open it and then spin it and if you miss it and it doesn't like don't mm -hmm. don't go oh and do it again or uh, if you did open it all the way and you strike then you're lost you can't do it again yeah because it, it looks like you're doing something yeah uh, whereas if I got this wallet out opened I haven't stri struck it but it hasn't lit it will light as you see you can almost know it hasn't done it you get a second attempt it. yeah and even at this here you can see it's still, still light it. so try and do it just as you open the wallet so literally just open the wallet and light perfect if because the strike is not 100% perfect it is a mechanical thing uh, the only thing that's making it work is the uh, little screws holding the spring and that's pushing it against the flint um, the flint will wear um, again we'll show you how to replace that shortly um, but as the flint just say you're in a point where the flint has suddenly broken or worn inside there you might find it a little bit unreliable for a few clicks until the spring pushes it up until, a little bit yeah. uh, and then it starts to work again and then there'll come a point at some point where the flint will be worn out and it's just not going to work and you'll think oh what's going on the flint's flint's obviously worn out and that's when you'll go through the repair process that yeah. we'll show you very long time and the repair process is very very simple yeah so what, we're, what mm -hmm. i'm trying to say is please keep it magical mm -hmm. <laughs> um a lot of people just use these at bars as well mm -hmm. don't they just when they order a drink they mm -hmm. think the waitress has never seen it before mm -hmm. if you use it just as we said open it do that and close it it will last for a long time yeah. if you have the wallet open um in fact, when I was uh, taking uh, this one to bits earlier, just to make sure the uh, spring mechanism and everything was uh, fine for when I demonstrate it to you in a little while, um, I had it open for probably 10 minutes or so, and the pad's dried out. Yeah. Uh, because the wallet was just open like this, the air can get to it, the heat can get to it, and everything and cool. just evaporates. We've got lights on in here as well, so it's... Uh, yeah, so uh, keeping so yeah. it like this will... will be bad for it, so let's close it. Yeah, <laughs> keep it closed, that's what it's there for. The edges of the little trays are there, to stop the air getting in if you have a look they sort of overlap each other uh, to help keep it closed and when it's in your pocket everything is nice and closed yeah. pushed together helping uh, the, the uh, fluid um, stay fresh
Brilliant. So there you go. That's what you get. How to look after it, how to refill it, how to light it, how to make it magical. Mm -hmm. Anything else or are we going to get into some close-ups? And uh... Uh, We'll get into the close-up now of the uh, mechanism Okay. and show you how to repair it. All right. Okay, so we're moving into your maintenance. Just imagine that your flint wheel has stopped working or it's getting a little bit unreliable. Uh, you need to get a small flat jeweler's type screwdriver and you'll see a little screw there. There isn't a slot in the screw, uh, but if you poke it into the bottom, it's got like a little recess into it. Just the, it's not in very tight, so the, the fact that you just push on it, it will uh, unscrew. So we just unscrew that screw and you take a few turns because it's not a very long screw as you'll see. You'll see that screw's just fallen out. There is a spring now inside there, and the reason that's not fallen out is because the end of that screw is shaped like a bullet and it's caught in the bottom of the spring. So the spring may pull out with it if it's wedged into the threads, or it may not. No, so let me just take that out. Oops. I'll leave it on the thing there so you can see. As you can see, uh, it really is shaped like a bullet. Shaped like it? a bullet, so the, the bullet pointy bit goes into the hole. Uh, so we'll just move that out of the way for now. And the, sp oh, the spring's just dropped out. There you go, perfect. Now, if the spring doesn't drop out with a little shake, you might need to get this screwdriver and just fish around up there gently uh, and tease the spring to come down. But you see. Uh, also, the bullet's probably going to have a spring. I've just covered the camera up, so. The bullet's actually got the um, the screw fits on it, yeah, so yeah. if you put it back in and tighten it up, sometimes it catches the spring again. Yeah, so you just need so to be careful when you put in the... I'm going to put it over there for you, Mark, so I don't lose it. The thing back in. So you've got your spring just falling out there. If not, you just get this screwdriver and tease it out. So there's your little spring that's come out. Now, because the flint in here is new, um, it's just not falling out. It's It's... There's, there's, there's now a tube there and the flint is at the top uh, here and it just won't fall out. When your flint has worn out and you just need to put a new one in, it doesn't matter if there's any old flint left in there that won't fall out because the natural abrasion of it will just cause the flint to disintegrate, yeah, disintegrate. and then the new flint um, goes, in. goes in its place. So the flints themselves, we mentioned the lighter fluid with Zippo being the, uh, the best or the one that we prefer. Uh, you can see here, uh, this is a, this is my Zippo lighter box, uh, which I just keep my spare Zippo spares in. Uh, Zippo do uh, replacement wicks and flints in this very handy container. Uh, in there, there's five, four or five flints left uh, in a nice little dispenser. Uh, I'll just take one out. You know what, I've got one of these dispensers in my close-up bag and it's been there for about three years mm -hmm. and I think I've used two and yeah. I use that lighter a lot. Because these flints take ages, they're just like a little um, brass rod really, yeah. they look like a brass rod but they must be made of flint or some so, uh, something similar. So that little uh, flint will <coughs> go into the hole on the, um, the there now before you put the spring back in. There's no point in me putting that one back in because there's already one in there. So I'll just pop that back into the uh... dispenser. These are very cleverly made, yeah. aren't they? They remind me, of, remind me of a game called Downfall when I was a kid. And you have to yeah. spin the wheels. There we go. So, <clears throat> so that's that. So imagine that we've just put the uh, little flint up into there. We then get the little spring. Just a little bit fiddly, but uh, you just get the little spring poke that up into the hole then get your little bullet screw get that uh, in making sure that the bullet pointy bit is um, going in first and get your screwdriver now you can put this in to different amounts and if you ma manage to wind it in quite a way the spring puts more tension on the flint so you just need to play around with it a little bit, but just tightening it in just a little bit. If you're just going to let it do its own thing, if you don't deliberately push it, it tends to find a natural place as well. So don't worry if you don't fancy the idea of playing around with it. You'll, as soon as it sort of gets stiff, doesn't it, you think, yeah. right, I'm in, and then... Because you'll see there now, I've wound that screw in most of the way. Okay, so it's only about a thread or two shelling uh, there, but it wasn't there to start with. 
back and wind that back out. Um, it will work in all those positions. You, you may feel that it feels nicer in one position uh, than another. Uh, and you see it's definitely sparking. Flicking away. Perfect. No, no problem. So as long as you've got a nice feel, you don't want it to be too stiff. No. Because if it's too stiff, you'll be. Yeah, you want it to be smooth. You'll, you'll be struggling to pull it. So as long as it's nice and smooth, creates a spark. You're all Job set. done. Yeah. So that's how you Simple. replace the flint and maintain it. So the Zippo parts are available uh, eBay online or yeah, any uh, in, in the UK. All, all of the shoe repair shops and things. Most of them sell. Yeah, most, most um, what they call the key cutters places as well. Yeah, uh, Timpsons is it Timpsons? Yeah, they do it. Um, yeah, there's loads of places. Mm -hmm. So, so there you go. That's how to um, maintain maintain it. and repair. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, if your if your uh, pads your pads will last a very long time. Um, we, we don't do any spare parts for any of the rest of the wallet, but if you've got to the point where it's literally worn that much, it's probably time for a new wallet. I'd be very impressed if someone um, managed to. Uh, yeah. You'd have to do that deliberately. You wouldn't be able to do mm -hmm. that through normal usage. Yeah. The only way you'll damage it through normal usage is if you are not bearing in mind the angle performance yeah. things that we were saying, and you've actually burnt or mounted the wallet, which is misuse really, rather than uh, anything being yeah, wrong so with the please, wallet. Please check out what we say in the tutorial for the mm -hmm. item. Okay. All right. Uh, now we're going to show you a really work. I'm going to say self-working on this one. Mm -hmm. Self-working card trick using your new wallet. There is some setup, um, but I'm going to show you the setup after. Mark, can you take those cards for me and just split them into two piles? Okay, perfect. We're going to mark where you've cut to. And uh, if if I can't get this wrong, or if I can't get this right, if I get this wrong, I'm going to give you. Wow. Well, uh, well, it's your wallet, and you've got a tenner in it, so we're going to play for a tenner. Mark. We're going to play for a tenner. <laughs> It's not really your wallet. Yeah. Well, you don't tell us what's it. Like. No, we're going to play for a tenner. Okay. Um, so you cut the card. So please just take a look at the one you put. Don't show me. Okay. Drop that on there. Drop those on there. And if you mix those up for me, so there's no way that I can cheat. Okay. Now at this point, you know exactly what's happened. Your home dry. We can say brilliant. Thanks for now. There's no way I can cheat, and I can try and read your mind. I can try and read your reactions. Mm -hmm. But at this point, I want to get it wrong. And I want to say, oh, it's the uh, it's the Ace of Hearts. No. 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 That means I get a tenner. Um, yeah, it does. Um, which is, whoa, um, it's the, what, that's... Ace of Spades. I'll keep that one. So, <laughs> there's a basic, basic performance. Mm -hmm. um, just to break that down, obviously the Spades in there the whole time. The card that you're forcing is a duplicate mm -hmm. card. Which Actually, we, I don't think I showed the card because I just looked at yeah. the card. But when I looked at the card, it was the Ace of Spades. So that goes in there. Mm -hmm. That stays in there. That goes in your pocket. The card that you're forcing almost goes to the top. Mm -hmm. Anyone that doesn't know the crosscut force, the reason it works is that people forget. It's the timing force. It sounds ridiculous, but you cut the cards. So, the, say, ace, so the Ace is now there Yeah, because it was on the top. We say we're going to mark where you've cut to. At that point, I am now going to get the wallet out or introduce the wallet or explain anything to take his mind mm -hmm. off the pack. And that's called time misdirection, which gives you the time between having done that, talked about this, and then coming back to this. So when I say you cut the cards, yep. he has to agree because he did. And I'll say you cut to one, lift up the pack, which we put, which I put on top. Yeah. He looks at the card that he look. thinks he cut to, which is realistically the top card. Mm -hmm. Has a look, goes back puts in, puts it down. Shuffle. You're free. Can do whatever he wants. Yeah, yeah. Then he's just playing on it. You get it wrong. You strike the wallet. Goes into flames. When you close it, you then open back up with that showing, which will be quite a shock. Yeah. And um, sure enough, there it is. There it is. Uh, there are lots of different ways to force a card, uh, but that's a very, very basic. Easy that's extremely way. To do there's it. certain things you could do with this routine to make it something interesting, like set fire to so burn the card in the wallet. Mm -hmm. um, you could do a lot of stuff with there. This, this, but there you go. It's a very simple mm -hmm. routine. Um, just to get you out mm -hmm. playing straight away. Mm -hmm. So try this one of your friends, yeah. try it in the pub. If you did want to burn the card in the wallet, uh, the way that you do that, because you, you could just set fire to it, which uh, would really burn the edges, but the fact it's only open for a little while, the card wouldn't have burned. Yeah, you want a flash fire, flash you burning. You just want it to be smoked a little bit. So the way you smoke a card is if you get a light, I've just stamped up one of these kitchen type lighters. Um, you want to put the card in the um, top of the flame. In the yellow bit. In the yellow bit, not the blue blue bit. I remember that from school. And so that is perfectly clean, as you can see. And if I just lower that down, 
the soot. Now I only did that very quickly, but you can see there the soot just from that few little moments. And you can probably smudge that in to do a bit, a bit more. If you're careful, you can move yeah. it around. But yeah, perfect. It's, so again, it's I'll action. Do, I'll do the, you don't have to hold it there for ages. If you do it for too long, it will bubble Bubbles, through. Yeah. Um, so literally just light it and offer that just above it. You see the flame's barely touching. And if you move it round a bit and you get a really, and as Tom said, if you catch it quick, you can smudge it in. You can actually smudge it a bit as well. Um, now you don't really want the round circles there, so just tidy it up. Just, I just think that's lads some just a nice little, uh, yeah, nice little edge to it. But it's their card and it's been burnt. You could even do it on the back a little bit if you wanted to as well. Yeah, you can then give that away. Yeah, if you do a few of those, and give and, it away. Uh, they've got the souvenir. It's been burnt in your wallet. Uh, if you wanted to uh, burn the edges, the easiest way um, to actually do that, just grab a pair of scissors if you wanted to make the card even more mashed up. If you take a pair of scissors and literally just cut a jagged edge like that and then burn the edges in the same way, that will take the sharpness off the edges that you've just Perfect. burnt. Please do this in a well ventilated area. If there's any sharp ed edges you need to burn them because you don't want it to look like they're cut, cut with scissors. <laughs> I'm getting covered in ash. There we go. There we go. What's the figment pad? Yeah. <clears throat> so it really depends how mad you want to go burning this car. Yeah, but, but there you, you go. You can customise it, you can cut it, you can burn it, or you can just have it normal. Please be aware, scissors are sharp, these <laughs> are sharp. Please use some common sense. Sam Magic can yeah. take no responsibility for any loss. Burnt, um, burnt fingers or, limbs, or anything, hair, damaged tablecloths <laughs> or anything from doing the crazy things that there we go. I mean, you in this I mean, video. If you have a look at this, that, that how, how quick was that? That was seconds and that really does look nice. Mm -hmm. And it's the little things like this that make people remember you or remain, mm -hmm. make it seem a little bit more tangible. So mm -hmm. there you go, burnt card to wallet. So there you have it, that's the uh, Wildfire Wallet. I do hope you get many, many years of um, practical use and safe fun out of this. Yes, safe fun. Please uh, don't phone me up to tell me that you've hurt yourself. Yeah, so, uh, so be careful. Unless, you want, unless it's not for, if you phone yeah. up just to have a laugh, then yeah, do phone me, please don't want sympathy. Yeah. Um, be careful, we will mention one thing about doing this near spectators. Keep it away from your spectators, especially women. Uh, women wear a lot of hairspray yeah. and personal products. Do you know what, this, I, People always say that with flash paper and I tend to ignore them because flash paper is a very quick, mm. this is solid <laughs> petrol driven fire and it will, um, I was taken aback about how much fire came out of this. I know that you were, I can see mm. the evidence on your arm. Please play around with it first, get to know it, uh, just be very careful with it and if I'm given a safety warning you know it's, you know it's serious. Yeah. Um, this is a superior quality fire wallet and you get a lot of fire out of it so just keep it well away from keep it, everything keep it, yeah uh, it, it's not like you know it's not like it's going to set fire to everything that's near you no just bear in mind um, that it's not the simple <laughs> but it's uh, a you, know, fire. You, you don't want to be holding it like no. this in front of somebody's face especially if they've got uh, long hair or, yeah any, any. <laughs> <laughs> so um it's my money maker yeah